Welcome back to Data Innovation Summit 2019. I'm joined here with a member of Vertica's team at our uh, conference. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Robert, for the introduction. My name is Mark Worley. I'm a Vertica systems engineer uh, working within the, uh, the MicroFocus organization. I've got about sort of four decades of relational database management experience starting out in the the late 19, so the early 1980s with a gentleman called Michael Stonebreaker's Ingress Relational Database Management System. So quite a legacy working through to, to Vertica. Um, I'm also the, the organizer of two big data and machine learning meetup groups. Uh, one's based in London, and we typically operate out of uh, Google Campus in London. Another one in the Cambridge Science Park um, out of a company called Jagex. Mm -hmm. We're about four and a half thousand members, so very active community and uh, that's a little bit of background to myself. Okay, so you said Ingress and that reminds me of Postgres and then uh, these are all databases. Vertica, you said you work with database, is Vertica just a database? Well, <laughs> I, I, I could answer that in one very, very quick answer and walk out of the door by saying, yes, it's just another SQL database. Okay. And that is a problem that I think we all have in that uh, there are so many in the competing in the market at the moment. If we steal sort of one of the um, uh, UK high streets retails sort of taglines, Vertica is not just a, another SQL database, it's an analytics database. And so that is one of its sort of key areas there. Um, Mention Stonebreaker. Uh, Michael Stonebreaker, back in the late 1970s, designed and built with some colleagues from MIT the world's, one of the world's first online transaction processing relational database management systems, let's say it was called Ingress, mm -hmm. um, from which many other database technologies were designed and built, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, all designed and built for that very, very sort of use case, online transaction processing workloads. They're still there today, of course. Oracle's still there, SQL Server's still there, Ingress is still there, although less, less, less heard of. But the world has changed. Um, today, yes, we still need OLTP databases, but the world has changed in so much as customers and users are now trying to, to analyze data from a far greater number of data sources, mm. uh, different data types at the same time the ever increasing velocity of the data that's arriving and be able to handle that data, to load that data, to process that data. Um, to be able to not just query data over the last week or the last month, but to do so over the last 10 years right. or, or beyond. Right. And to do so running queries with sub-second response times. They don't want to have that, uh, I have to wait for my report to be generated. They want to have a conversation with the data so that they can run a query and in sub-seconds get that response. Now the legacy OLTB databases, brilliant as they are for what they were designed for, just can't cut it. Yes, they can't, no matter what you do to them, you can't make them do what they weren't designed to do. I think the analogy I like to use is, you, you, you buy a Ferrari, you don't go and drive it up a, 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 a snow-capped mountain. Yes, it right. wasn't designed for that. Uh -huh. It might do it, but it wasn't designed for that. So, say Stonebreaker, um, back in, um, uh, 2014, um, he was awarded the, uh, 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 Turing, the Award? Turing Award, thank you, the Alan, the Alan Turing Award in 2014 for his contributions to database technologies. Mm -hmm. um, in 2004, having, as I say, previously built and designed Ingress, and you mentioned Postgres, of course, he built Progress, Postgres as well, he realized that what he had designed and built was now being used for purposes that it wasn't designed for. Right. So he co-authored a paper called the Column Store, C Store, Column Orientated Relational Database Management System. And uh, from that, uh, he then went on to design and build what we now know as, as Verti Vertica today. Okay. So um, Vertica it was um, designed, built for today's modern analytic workloads. Yes, it's not an OLTP database, so we're not trying to push out the OLTP types of this world. But I say it was designed and built from that first line of code to address those, those, those workloads. That's interesting, the database uh, technology uh, compared to say AI technology mm. has a fairly, is extremely mature, has a lot of best practices, sure. has a lot of, uh, um, you know, you can look at, at implementations and say that these worked well and these didn't work well. And so, um, I guess Vertica then takes a lot of those learnings and then including the person that uh, founded the C-Store paradigm or, or created it, 
and brings them straight into Vertica. Absolutely, yes, I mean, we, 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 we consider ourselves to be a mature product, yes, in so much as we've been around since 2005, yes, so we have inbuilt into the database. The things that data scientists, data analysts are looking for, I, mean, I typically talk today to uh, uh, data scientists, and we have a booth here, as you know, and we have a number of people coming along to us, and I always ask, if, if I may ask a data scientist, could they estimate the amount of time that they spend in in their daily workload of doing data science, how much of their time do they do spend doing data exploration, data preparation, before they can even get on to doing the real lux of the work, which is data science, yes, machine learning. And I get figures everything from being 60, but more likely 80 to 90% of their time, they're spending preparing, understanding what the data is. Right. So anything we can do within the database to do so at speed, to make that journey a little bit easier, mm -hmm. makes the data scientist's life a little bit easier so they can cut down that 90% of their time down to 10% of their time. Uh, so we have things like data preparation tools like um, uh, one-hot encoding, uh, gap filling and interpolation, sessionization, and all these. And even on the ETL layer. Even on the ETL layer too. So yes, you take, take on the ETL layer, we, on the data ingestion side, one of the, sort of the, the, the hardest concepts of getting through is how do you ingest data at speed and at volume mm. into any uh, columnist or database technology. Vertica works beautifully with the likes of um, Apache Kafka, mm -hmm. which may, may, may have come across as a messaging bus. So rather than uh, addressing the needs of trying to in load single rows of data one at a time, we can use Kafka's messaging bus to say load data every five or mm. every 10 seconds and do so uh, at, at great speed. Yes. I have to ask, I'm a little bit skeptical. A lot of times when you buy databases, you get the database and it's real good and then you want to do something useful and you have to have an add-on in order to c connect it to Kafka and you need an add-on in order to get uh, uh, you know, clustering mode activated, or yep. you know, all the cool stuff that that you actually do want. <laughs> so it's not enough to just have the database. Um, how, does, is Vertica a suite like that, or how do you very typically work so. with it? Very much so. Vertica is uh, Vertica is very much so. It all comes in one box. Yes. So you 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 bring your uh, analytics platform database Vertica to 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 the party. It has everything that you possibly need to do everything from the data ingestion to the data preparation. To so those aren't learning. separate parts, separate, separate things, parts. they're part of Vertica? Part of Vertica, so if you okay. want to do machine learning with uh, predictive analytics, so, so logistic regression, linear regression, naive Bayes, they're just functions within the database. So they're already there, already built in, geospatial's already in place as well. I think you mentioned earlier, before we were on camera here, that there's a community edition, so you can go and try it and stuff. Are, are those things uh, available in the community edition? So if I want to try clustering, if I want to try machine learning, um, ingestion from Kafka and that kind of stuff, is that, is that stuff that's included? Absolutely, I mean, the, the, the whole design principle of, of, of our engine is that we have a single RPM install. So the single RPM install nice. is both the enterprise edition of Vertica, which is the paid for licensed version, mm. right down to the community edition. The only restrictions with the community edition, and have to, we have to apply some sort of restrictions, mm -hmm. are that, yes, it's free, yes, there are some limitations on the volume of data, and it's one terabyte of data, which is, more than enough to kick the tires with, mm. um, and you cannot deploy on more than three compute nodes. Okay. Now, many of our uh, prospects who are playing with the community edition will install it on a virtual machine on right. a laptop, so absolutely perfect. Right, yep. so you can try clustering and everything. You can try clustering, and that's one of the reasons why we allow it to go up to three nodes, because mm. Vertica has high availability built in from, from source. Mm. So in the event of a node failure, Vertica continues to operate. But that only comes into play when you have three nodes or more. So right. we give you the three node option within the community edition to try that out. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, that's pretty neat. Um, I have to say, uh, I like Raspberry Pis, <laughs> so I recognize what's on the table here, but I'm not exactly sure what Raspberry Pi has to do with Vertica. <laughs> I, I hope you're not saying that organizations would run their database on the Raspberry Pi. Is that what you're going to say? I'm certainly saying that, yes. And, and although technically capable of running Vertica, I wouldn't even envisage trying to get Ro Vertica running on here. Okay. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, interesting project, and this is why I brought this up on stage here, was um, any database technology, it's not just Vertica, but any database technology is not the sort of thing you can talk about 
excitedly about saying this is a sexy thing to look at. There's nothing to visualize. Mm. So what I wanted to do a couple of years ago is to do, I developed a project uh, that I wanted to share with the, I mentioned the Big Data and Machine Learning Meetup group. I wanted them, our participants to there, to be able to follow a project that they could do themselves at minimal cost yeah. to show what you could do with Vertica as the database backend. So this is a project uh, which I used the Raspberry Pi for. Um, where I am tracking commercial aircraft, please, yes, please, uh, tr tracking commercial aircraft in real time using, as I say, the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. Apache Kafka, and Vertica as the analytics database. And the typical example, we have three of these at the moment. One's located in Geneva, one located in JFK, or just outside JFK Airport, and I have another one in my hometown of, in South Wales. You have a little uh, GPS receiver. GP and some yep. kind of antenna, I guess. Absolutely, I didn't bring the antenna into the, into the into stage here, but yes, we connect an antenna, so the antenna is about uh, uh, half a meter high. And a, a typical one of these, we have three of these set up, and they will pick up anything up to 100 million messages per day. Wow, Off nice. a single, uh, so, so a, a set of three of these. But that, that's fun to look through once it ends up in the database. Indeed, yes, so we, 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 the database is growing quite naturally, and I say yesterday we ran a workshop here uh -huh. uh, where we had uh, just over 30 people, 30 attendees, connecting into our, 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 our vertical database, which is sitting, in this instance, it's sitting in AWS, mm -hmm. and I say we can deploy in, in any of the other clouds, so okay. AWS, Google, and Azure. Mm -hmm. So they were quite happily connected to the AWS instance and seeing the live data streaming in from Geneva, New York, and South Wales. Yeah. Cool. Well, it pays to be informed. So if you haven't heard of Vertica, give it a look. You can deploy it into the cloud. You can deploy it locally. And there's a community edition that helps you get started, right? And, and you one further one, you can also deploy inside and alongside any of the Hadoop distros. So if you're into Hadoop, you can okay. deploy in there as well and in ingest data from, from Hadoop. Cool. Thanks for the tech, uh, tech intro, and uh, we'll be seeing you again shortly.